All right, so we've got a sphere. Uh, it's sort of a shell of a sphere, and then there's a thing for it to stand on, a little base, and there's a hole in the top. And there's this pattern, this cool pattern with sort of pentagons and so on. And I've got a flashlight or a torch if you haven't been in America for too long. You can take the, the sort of lens off and you just get like a, it's supposed to be like, like it's like a candle or something. But what I want to use it for is to show this thing stereographic projection. So if I put the light right at the north pole of the sphere, then you get this pattern of shadows. So, all right, so what is stereographic projection? It's a map from the sphere to the plane, and the light rays sort of do that map. A light ray comes from the North Pole, and let's say this one here, right? So it hits the point on the sphere here, and it goes down to the, the table here, so the plane. So and you can see, like, if I put my little finger near to this point on the sphere, you can see the shadow on the plane is, is where, it's, where it's going to. It was one of the first ways that people thought about like maps of the Earth or the, the heavens, right, the celestial stuff. So the Greeks knew about this stuff. And a lot of the, the old kind of star maps are done with stereographic projection. So one of the things that's really cool about it is it, it preserves angles. I and mean, you can see on this model, there's all these like three or, or six, 60 degree angles here. It's like, it's like a radiation symbol here. And the shadow has these 60 degree angles and the, the sphere also has those 60 degree angles. And so not only does it, it preserve angles, right? Angles stay the same. It also preserves circles. You can see on this, there's all these great circles, like an equator of the sphere. Well, actually, this one doesn't have an equator if this is the North Pole. There isn't an equator drawn in. But like the path that you take if you just start sailing in a straight line around the Earth is this circle that's like an equator. If you look at where is this path on, down on the shadow, I think it's this one here. And you can see that it's a circle there as well. So to, to, to see the circles a little bit better, maybe, let's, let's have a look at this one. It's got circles all over the place. It's kind of like a dodecahedron, icosahedron thing with circles. Let's see what kind of shadow this makes. And if I hold the light in the right place, you can see, so this circle up here goes to this circle down here. So yeah, somehow it, it knows that circles are supposed to be circles, even though things are getting kind of weirdly distorted, right? The size of the circles changes a lot. Um, on the plane, they're all the same size on the sphere, of course, but it still knows that they should be circles. And right, I mean, you know, if you move it somewhere else, then like it has to be right at the North Pole for it to work. And the same thing with the angles. If it's not at the North Pole, it's not stereographic projection. It doesn't have all these nice properties. So here's a, yet another right, pattern on a sphere with this sort of weird curvy thing going on. So, well, what's this going to make? You may be surprised. Well, let's find out. And if you put this in, there's this perfectly regular square grid hiding inside of this really curvy round thing. Well, the way I made this is I started with the square grid and then I put it back up onto the sphere to see what's going on. So I could just continue making this square grid going further and further out. And then I'm going to get closer and closer into the North Pole, but I'll never actually get to the North Pole, right? The North Pole somehow corresponds to going infinitely far out this way, going infinitely many squares. Eventually, well, I wouldn't ever get to the North Pole, but that's what the North Pole corresponds to. The North Pole isn't there. It's a one-to-one -one thing. Every point on the sphere gets a point on the plane apart from the North Pole. So, so the plane plus one point at infinity, infinitely far away, is the same as the sphere. So this is a two-dimensional surface, goes to the two-dimensional plane. Let's go one dimension down. Let's do the, so the equivalent of the, the sphere, the two-dimensional sphere, is the one-dimensional circle, right? It looks like a line if you just look at a, big, a piece of it. Let's draw the, the table, and then my light is going to be here at the north pole of this circle, right? A circle is sort of a one-dimensional version of the, of the sphere. And so, you know, a light ray comes down here, and it hits the sphere somewhere, and it hits the plane somewhere, and that's the map. Stereographic projection takes you from here to here. And so, you know, what we were doing is, okay, squares are marching off this way, and like, you know, there's, there's another square. And so there's another line that goes out here. And the corresponding point on the sphere gets closer to the North Pole and you get closer and this line goes off and you get closer and this line goes off. But you never, like the North Pole itself is somehow like infinitely far away. Circle, same thing as the line plus a point. And then we had the sphere in ordinary three-dimensional space is the same thing as the two-dimensional plane plus one point, the North Pole, or infinitely far away. Sphere in two-dimensional space, sphere in three-dimensional space, sphere in four-dimensional space. Okay, so if we're in four-dimensional space, 
we can still measure things and we can still say there's a sphere, right? It's this thing which is the set of points which are at some distance from the center. And, and we can't see it, and you can't, you know, because it's four dimensional. But same thing, the sphere is the same thing as the three dimensional plane, space, whatever, plus a point at infinity. So, or in other words, I can't show you this sphere in four dimensional space, but I can show you the shadow. The shadow is going to be a three dimensional thing. So we can see it, or we can 3D print it, or we can do computer animations or something. And this gives, gives you some idea of what this thing in four dimensions is. So here, what were we doing? We were like drawing squares on the, the sphere in three-dimensional space and then casting the shadow. So we're going to draw something else on the sphere in four-dimensional space and cast a shadow. So what are we going to be drawing? Um, monkeys. So this is a, like a monkey design. Like, so so you're, sketch, you're sketching something on the surface of this sphere. So just like you know, you're drawing some two-dimensional picture here, I need to draw a three-dimensional picture on this sphere in four-dimensional space. And the three-dimensional picture I'm going to draw is this monkey, or it's going to be a slightly distorted version of this monkey. So what, what could you draw that with, like, like three-dimensional paint? You, well, yeah. I mean, like, like the sphere in four-dimensional space is a three-dimensional thing. So anything three-dimensional, you can put it on there in the same way you can put anything two-dimensional on a two-dimensional sphere, a surface, whatever. So really, this is drawn on one cubicle side of a hypercube, whatever, and then it gets sort of uh, really projected out onto the sphere in four-dimensional space. Once you're on the sphere, then we can do this stereographic projection, make a three-dimensional shadow of it in three-dimensional space, which we can see. This is the monkey inside of one cube of the hypercube. And he's, so this, this cube has six neighbors, so this monkey needs six neighbors. And they're all kind of like twisting around in various ways. This is showing kind of some kind of crazy four-dimensional symmetry group. That's why the monkey is there, is it's, it's a motif that's showing this symmetry. We got our four-dimensional flashlight and or torch, whatever, depending on your Commonwealth status. Um, and you project it down to three-dimensional space, and we see what it looks like. We can see it now. And we can see it with our poor three-dimensional brains that can't deal with four-dimensional stuff. There are people who claim they can see in four dimensions, but I think they're lying. Right, so this is um, eight monkeys. Um, and they're showing this particular kind of four-dimensional symmetry. So maybe you can see this. There's like, there's a ring of four monkeys, one, two, three, four, going around like this. And they're all sort of standing on each other's heads. And then there's another ring of four monkeys that goes through here, one, two, three, four. And then there's a particular kind of sort of twisting symmetry that sends like this monkey to this monkey to this monkey to this monkey, and, and they kind of screw twist around. Um, as you go through, there's an animation. You'll show the animation. Maybe it will make sense. It'll be great. Some people get like really weirded out by this. They 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 like you know this. They're sort of disturbing the shapes of them, but it's just math. Like this is just what it does to the monkey. There's no no emotional content intended. Take from it what you will. I guess that's art, right? You you can do whatever you want with it. It's your fault you gave them the horrific faces, though. That's not the fault of math. Look, he's happy. Oh, sure. Look at this happy monkey. Uh, I mean, maybe he's a little bit annoyed that his, he, his friend is standing on his head. It, oh. <laughs> so, so this is a fun part. Uh, so this is, a, this is a fun story, actually. They just pooped on you. Yeah, well, actually, so, so oh, it's still going. <laughs> so, so they're printed, right, 3D printed, and it's made with like plastic dust that gets melted. They're hollow, but in shipping, some dust gets shaken out. So they, you know, gradually sort of lose dust. We can, um, yeah, everything gets covered in white dust. Dust from the fourth dimension. It is, it is, is four-dimensional monkey dust. Now, now, I could have made this less of a problem. Um, the, the issue is that, like, the mouth is the only exit hole, right? If there were two exit holes in a monkey, then you could blow air through it and blow all of the dust out. But where are you going to put another hole in a monkey? I, I mean, can, I can think. you already have monkey butts all it, like you cannot take a photograph of this that doesn't involve a monkey butt. And if there were, I, yeah, no. So this is eight monkeys, which, and the, there's one monkey in each cube of the hypercube. The, cube, the hypercube has eight, eight cubes in it. So this is a particular symmetry that comes, that's sort of associated with the hypercube. So there's these other four dimensional versions of the platonic solids. So there's something called the 24 cell. And you can do the same thing with, 24 
monkeys. So this one, there were these two chains of four monkeys each, head to, head to foot, head to foot. This one also has these, these chains of monkeys. So the best one is probably this one right in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. There's a chain of six monkeys here going head to foot. And you can spot these other chains of monkeys. So there's another chain of six monkeys. So there's, all, there's I think, four different chains of six monkeys because four times six is 24, good, 24 cell. And just going one step further, because why not? You can do the same thing with 120 cell. 120 monkeys, this isn't actually the whole thing. So this is only up to the equator of the sphere in four-dimensional space. So this is only showing the southern hyperhemisphere, hemi-hypersphere, whatever. So there should be more monkeys out here. You can see like they're trying to grab onto things, but there are no more monkeys out there just because it would get enormous. But okay, so it was like chains of monkeys. This one has a chain of 10. And again, you can, you can do these animations where the, those monkeys are sort of slowly moving along those chains, twisting as they go. And these are showing different four-dimensional symmetries that don't really exist in three-dimensional space. The reason why, you know, this thing, I mean, it's not actually fair because, you know, there's different like the six dents taken out of this, and there's one, and you know, or forgetting all that, suppose it was an ordinary, you know, just a perfect mathematical cube.